A fiery rivalry, a nemesis with benefits, a race to get to the bottom, but stay on top. Here, best-selling romance author Lily Chu's newest Audible original, Drop Dead, starring Hamilton's breakout star Philippa Sue, alongside versatile funny man John Cho of Star Trek and Harold and Kumar fame. Filled with huge laughs, big twist, and sizzling banter throughout, Lily Chu's latest weaves together a scandalous mystery and slow burn romance to heart pounding effect. Unravel the secrets and watch the sparks fly as fellow fearless reporters Nadine and Wes embark on a fast paced adventure, chasing down the truth and stumbling upon something far deeper than either could have imagined. From the queen of swoon worthy moments herself, Lily Chu's Drop Dead is a hilarious and lust filled must listen. Listen now, go to audible.com slash drop dead. Again, go to audible.com slash drop dead. Today's episode is brought to you by Altoids because let's face it, navigating the dating world isn't easy, but with Altoids, your breath will be stronger than the urge to text. You up at 1 a.m. More intense than a rose ceremony and more reliable than your besties' questionable dating tips. Like do the simple things. Make sure that you have fresh breath wherever you go and you got to do it with Altoids. Altoids is your sidekick in dating. Do yourself a favor and make sure that you have fresh breath. There is no bigger turn off than stale, stinky, rotten breath. It's also so easy because I feel like with gum, you always either, hey, I've like a wrapper you got to throw away or God. you're like the gum gets nasty and you're like, where can I throw right. this gum away? Oh, with an Altoid, it's just so easy to throw in your bag. So easy to just have, dissolve in your mouth, chew it up, fresh breath immediately. Immediately. Altoids is the strong, reliable and intense boost of freshness that young professionals and single minglers need to be their authentic selves in daily life. When walking into a high stakes moment if you have altoids your breath is one less thing you have to think about when it comes to needing confidence and security to show up as your original self altoids has you covered they're not just mints they're curiously strong mints find altoids in the checkout aisles grab your tin today <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Vile Files Ask Nick edition. And I might be waking up my daughter. I can't <laughs> really tell. Ah! Well, we are up at the lake. And so Natalie graciously offered to join us for an Ask Nick intro. Justin says his thanks. Sends his thanks. And since we're up at the lake, I think uh, not too long ago, we uh, told a lovely story. I think it was lovely. Of these lovely. letters that my grandparents wrote to each other. And we're going to read the first two. We found the first two. We found the first one my grandfather ever wrote to my grandmother and her response the next day because they're postmarked. Well, anyways, Ask Nick, this being a, really a, a show, a, a, a series about love and connections. It's always nice to go back to see how love happened in uh, 1945, postmarked January 4th, 1945. Anyways, we have it. Oh, Friday night. Before we get to these letters, we do have a great we lined up for you. Excited for you guys to listen. Hold on to your butts, as I always say. You say that? You hate that. You always say that. You always say, hold on to your butts (laughs) every Ask Nick episode? (laughs) Well, because it's it's Ask Nick. Justin Long gave us that title. Did he? Well, you know, if you don't enunciate, Ask Nick sounds a lot like Ask Ask Nick. Nick. Oh, hold on to your butts. Hold on to your butts. Wow. I just made that up. I thought Justin Long. Well, I do, ha- I have said hold on to your butts because it's a phrase from Jurassic Park that Samuel L. Jackson's character has. Okay. Well, <laughs> thank God we've got a hero on Ask Nick or else we'd be lost. <laughs> Anyways, all right. Uh, an Ask Nick uh, season. Per- that one was definitely ass. <laughs> there was no K on that. I did that on purpose. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, ass Nick. Uh, letters from 1946. 45. Uh, a Vile Files origin story. Without these letters, the show doesn't exist. It, that's very true. Yeah, this but, is and now he's gonna read because we all know. Well, I can't. I'm gonna read Roland's to Terry, I his think... grandfather to his grandmother, and then I think you should read grandmother to grandfather. I try, but I just think for everyone's sake. Well, well, you know, Derek will do his magic and we'll, <laughs> <laughs> we'll speed it up. <laughs> Put this in a time x times two if you want to get through it. Okay. January 4th, 1945, a Friday night. Derek, if you're listening, can you give the audience, uh, you can even keep this in there. Give them a little, um, 
sad music. Not sad. Not sad. Like happy. A, like it's happy. It's 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 inquisitive. It's, it's, it's yeah. Give us the 1940s. Like you said, oh, the, a 1945. Yes, yeah, set the scene. Yeah. So all right, and take it away, Derek. January fourth, nineteen forty-five, Friday night. Hello, Terry. I didn't hardly expect to be writing to you quite so soon, but I am afraid I have you on my mind. When I came home, I told my father that I had gotten along without girls for two years, and I could do it for another two years. Man was focused, starting his life. Now he claims I'm in love already. What do you think about it? Ooh, here. Here's hoping you made it home all right. I almost... Because, <laughs> like, if not, I guess I'll have to move on. I Here's guess. hoping. I almost made you miss your train again. Uh-oh. I don't see why I didn't. I wouldn't have been so lonesome last night. I took my father to Clintonville last night to get his train. And on the way back, it was so foggy, I had to drive 15 miles per hour all the way. You couldn't see a foot in front of the car. Couldn't even see the snow land on the side of the road. Don't forget that lock of hair you were going to send me. Okay. And that, especially... That, was the next the, thing. that is the next That's thing. That's a transition? That is a transition. He wants hair. He wants the lock of hair and the picture. You... Don't have to tell me every time you have a date, though. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> First he wants hair. Now he's getting a little jealous. He's getting a little jealous. I'm afraid I'm getting too jealous, honey. I hate to think of someone else kissing those lovely lips. Right now, I am battling with myself for a cigarette. Is that Je what he says? That is what he says. This man died of emphysema. Just for you, I won't smoke one. I've got to cut down on my smoking sometimes. I finally got my hair washed last night. Interesting. You'd never know. What you'd find in the hair. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out, though, I have twice as much hair, and it's just as yellow as can be. You had blonde hair, I take it? Yeah, or? I guess. All right. I've got a good question for you to answer. How am I going to wait until next summer to see you again. <gasps> that is a long time. I did well, it get... is January, so it's not as if it's the end of summer. Summer's five months away. I did get to like you a lot in the short time of knowing you, Terry. I was gone a long time, but it didn't seem like that was the reason. It's time to go to bed and dream. So I must say goodnight. All my love, Roly. 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 What a lovely letter. Keep in mind, this is a man who uh, came back from the Pacific in World War II. He came back from the Pacific and fell in love and wrote her some letters. Uh, yeah, anyways, that's uh, that was Roly's letter to Teresa. And I think next week we will read Teresa's response to Roly. I will give you a, a, a hint. She says, P.S. Be good, please. Dot, dot, dot. P.S.S. Don't forget, honey, this letter is sealed with a kiss. P.S.S.S. Please send me a picture of yourself soon, Terry. She's asking for nudes already. Terry, <laughs> you dog. You dog. Uh... <laughs> it's so romantic, though. Like, it's just they're in the beginning stages of There's falling so in many, love. They're, they're, and it's... My mom has them all in a dresser right here. Uh, so next week we'll read your, her response. And maybe, I don't know, maybe if you guys really enjoy it, we'll, we'll continue to do them. Or, or we won't. I was just going to say, we also don't care if the people like it or not because i feel like we should share yeah. period because i think they will grow to love it uh quick two things you love most about me about you mm -hmm. oh my gosh where do i even begin i just want to you want me to be serious or do you want me to be jokey however you want remember when, remember when we were at that concert and that guy asked us what oh my god <laughs> that's what i'm thinking of right now <laughs> we, uh. we were at this concert and this Nice, n nice fellow came up to us and said, out of nowhere, it was quite literally out of the blue, and said, She um, tried to ask Nick me. She, us. He tried he, to ask Nick us. He did. He tried to ask Nick us. And he said, what is one thing that you hate about Nick that you also love? And I was like, oh, just trying to have a good time. And here. then he grabs my shoulders and looks me in the eye and goes, this will be hard. Yeah. <laughs> and then goes back to me. He did. It was bizarre. This was in public. It was, it, yeah, it was quite interesting. Uh, so I wasn't prepared for that, and I'm actually not prepared for this either. But two things that I love about you, 
You are an incredible father Mm -hmm. and an even better partner, which I can't even. How could I even be a better partner than a father? Exactly. That's why I'm like mind blown every day. But then like turns out you are. Shocker. You too are an incredible mother and an even better partner. That actually doesn't work that way. You can't use the same compliment. Really? Yeah. You are. We we couldn't travel without you. Because I pack everyone's bags. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. But I know it's more specific. Yours is more general, like overarching. You're a great dad. And yeah. I was trying to get more specific. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, please get more specific. Do you feel like what what are some things that you definitely would forget in packing? Everything. Okay. Toothbrush. Every, everything. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I thought your heart is more in it now. When when Nally first started packing for us, there was definitely a lot. Like I got like a, two pairs of jeans. It's because he'd and be one sassy. And a half so I was, he would be sassy with me. So I'd yeah. be like, okay, fine. Enjoy this this sweater in Hawaii. <laughs> that's all I packed. <laughs> it felt like that. Well, that's sometimes how it was intended. <laughs> Meanwhile, she had an extra outfit choice for each day. For uh, myself, yes. No, but even even you not packing well is a net positive for me. Well, yeah. I but, also... But now your heart's in it. I also, you, the way you pack... Also, she's offered. I never, I never asked her to. Well, the way that you pack a suitcase just gives me such severe anxiety that I must uh-huh. take about and roll it. You know, that's how things yeah. in a suitcase belong. All right. Well, we got some great calls lined up for you today. I hope the, the letters brought out love in your heart because uh, it brought out love in ours. Uh, sending your questions at asknick at the for all your Ask Nick uh, questions. We love you. We support you. Tell your friends. Tell your friends. Yeah, let's get to our callers. Question time with me. Let's ask Nick your sexy questions. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. What's your name? My name is Lydia. I'm 23 years old, and a guy moved across the country for me after two dates. Did you ask him to? No, I didn't <laughs> ask him to. That sounds wild. I'm, I'm curious as to what your magic recipe is, but offer us a little context into what makes you say that a man moved across country for you after two dates. I will say we have known each other previously. Mm -hmm. Um, It's kind of like a young love story. We went to a camp together um, multiple summers when we were both a lot younger, like teenagers, Uh and definitely had that camp crush thing going on. Um, However, it didn't really last. You know, I left for college life moved on and we randomly rekindled when my work sent myself to his city um and me and him have actually kept in okay touch like I said it was such a young love thing that when we quote-unquote ended there was no like actual bad blood we would catch up every now and again wish each other happy birthday well that's okay because you weren't you weren't exes exactly um so when My work flew me out to his city for a project. I obviously let him know I was coming. We spent pretty much that whole time together and it went really well. I mean, I've always thought he was a great guy. We have similar values, which is a big thing for me. And we just had like, honestly, pretty good time together to where he then requested to come see me next. And I was just kind of like, why not see where this goes? I was definitely willing for him to come see me. Like I said, I had a good time. Once he came to see me, we had spent a couple days together where I live. And he one night just told me, like, I've been really thinking about it. And I really think I should move to you. At that, I kind of freaked out. I that It just was a lot for me. And I, I told him I didn't think it was a good idea. And I would prefer to at least have more months of, like, uh-huh. going back and forth and and I, getting and, to re know each other to be clear wow. and i think you were very clear but just to be extra clear this wasn't like you had two dates and on the second date he's like i've been really thinking about moving here for a while now and this is just another reason and like you weren't the reason but like maybe the right that's not it this is he presented it as i'm moving for us yes However, he had mentioned, like, me and my buddy have been, like, wanting to move for a bit now, but I truly believe that had me and him not reconnected, like, he still wouldn't have moved at this this point. Like, 
I feel like that's kind of something he threw in to soften the blow because he knew it would freak me out. So, I mean, okay. I, I guess right. he's very adventurous. He was willing to take the job. Sure. Stuff like that is not a big deal to him. But after he communicated this, you you quickly said to him, uh, not in love with this idea as it relates to you two. And you would be more comfortable with like him not moving for you. Yes. <laughs> what did he say to that? At that point, he understood my concern. It's like, I understand, like, we can just see. And then about a week later, he's like, okay, me and my friend have like picked out a date. So he almost kind of acknowledged what I had set up first and then sort of went okay. around that later. Okay. I don't necessarily have a problem with that yet, but so he's already there. He's, he's moved. Yes. He's oh. here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and what has your relationship, if any, has, what has it been? Are you guys even hanging out? Are you communicating? Are you, are you playing house? What, what, what does this look like for you two? Yeah. So he, he's moved here and also on, and maybe this was my mistake, but after that second weekend together, he asked if I wanted to be his girlfriend. And in my mind, I'm like, why not? I'm not really talking to anyone else. I would happily exclusively continue to get to know you. Mm -hmm. So I committed to that. Whereas I think in his mind, becoming boyfriend and girlfriend meant a lot more of like merging our lives together. So since he's moved here, we don't live together or anything. He moved somewhere else, pretty close to me though. Since he's been here, it's been a lot of him like wanting to get in on a lot of aspects of my life. He's very sociable. Like I'm the more like black cat of the pair and he's way more like sure likable and outgoing and so he's already got jumped into my church he's like friends now with a lot of my friends and so he's definitely like trying to merge lives where I still feel like I'm even I'm just struggling to catch up like I feel like even after those first two weekends I knew I wanted to continue getting to know him but I didn't really know much more beyond that Whereas he is just definitely more infatuated, definitely more of the romantic. And so all of this is kind of just making me question if we're compatible, because I kind of think I have built up almost a resentment to mm -hmm. him for like kind of going against what I said I was comfortable with. And then now I feel like I'm paying the price for it because I just can't get my feelings to that level. Okay. All right. Well, how much of your concerns and anxiety and feelings on this topic, have you continued to communicate to him? Or did you kind of shut down after you communicated your initial feelings and it, he seemingly ignored them? I think in the last couple of days, I've communicated a lot. I think at first, I kind of shut down. I kind of tried to just like mentally get to his level and I couldn't. And I think that caused me to weirdly pull back from him and then that kind of caused uh, him to I wouldn't be say like, that's weirdly you don't have much of a rapport with this guy you know I know you have a bit yeah. of a history but that history is more based off of like nostalgia and history rather than like knowing who he is today as a man mm -hmm. so the fact that he reacted that way like I'm kind of just taking everything in right now and like I think there's a path of like there could be people listening being like, girl, leave his ass like that's crazy that's possessive that's controlling I don't know maybe it's all those things or Maybe to your point, he's just like more adventurous, more outgoing, more personable, more just kind of like, what the fuck? And like, we'll figure it out together. You know what I'm saying? But like, um, this really comes down to uh, your ability to communicate your feelings and boundaries and expectations and his willingness, despite his enthusiasm, despite his intensity, despite his adventurous spirit, if it's just those things is his willingness to acknowledge your feelings and how you feel about the situation and to be willing to go at your pace regardless of his decision to move like the you know you don't own this city right like you know wherever you are it's, it's not your city right mm -hmm. so he has every right to move there and maybe again he's this ultra how old is he 20 Okay, so he's relatively young, especially, you know, for 2024 standards, right? So maybe he's just in this, like, kind of more selfish, you know, adventurous. He has a his buddies, like, let's get the fuck out of here. And, like, you're just 
a reason. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we just have to figure it out, right? So I'm curious, when you did communicate recently, what did you communicate and how did he respond? I essentially said, this has all been moving very fast for me. And I feel like I'm like more of a slow burn. Like I feel like I'm friends with people for a while before I even really consider dating them sometimes. And so I basically told him like, I want to like get to know you I feel like he thinks that we know each other so well, but I'm like, you're literally remembering when we were 16, like so much has changed. Like I want to build a genuine connection with you, but it cannot continue to be at this pace. I don't want to necessarily merge lives. Like I'd rather just like almost like start over in a way, like go on dates and like almost like the courtship aspect of this has been like not there because it's just been a whirlwind of like sure. moving and just jumping into my life and it's like and how i did, kind of don't feel that how did he no. respond he said he had to think about that we just have very different views on dating from his perspective he's all about hanging out in groups and doing fun stuff together and then kind of from there getting to know each other whereas i'm very much more about the one-on-one like let's not merge lives kind of thing first totally i think everyone listening empathizes on either they relate to you or you sound like a normal person uh when he says i need to think about it what exactly does he mean yeah i think a big what i heard is you communicating how you feel And I hope and assume that this is more along the uh, non-negotiable department. Like here you are saying, this is what I need to enter into a serious and exclusive relationship. And this is my comfort level of like intimacy and and opening up. And like, you know, those are fairly, fairly serious things. And, and I'm just really curious what he's thinking about. Like, I mean, if he's thinking about, oh, Maybe I'm not compatible with her and I need to think about if this is the type of girl I want to get to know. That's fair, right? And if he wants to like think about whether he wants to pursue you, that makes sense. But I don't get the impression or maybe he doesn't even know what he means he needs to think about it. And maybe it's just like a power play. But I am curious if you know. I think I do. So also a big theme throughout this relationship has been he's a lot more affectionate and a lot more affirming with his words like he'll be the one to be like I miss you and honestly because I feel like this has all been a whirlwind and there's been a huge lack of one-on-one time and connection and like really getting to know each other like I just can't get myself to like match that like I'm naturally not even good at like giving boyfriends like compliments much less one that like I feel like is just intruding on my life without really taking that one-on-one time with me so and he's brought this up a lot he thinks he's like the main one trying he thinks he's the main one you know putting himself out there which one could argue I mean he is the one moving not that I asked him to but I think he thinks that me asking to pull back is like I don't know pulling back even more from him feeling like well listen um, that's the thing you know, as, as someone who listens to a lot of people talk about relationships, I'm, I'm, I pay attention to dating culture, even though I'm no longer single and things like that. And as a new dad, I'm always like thinking about this shit and like people truly are, are like more lonely than ever before. People are having a harder and harder time finding relationships and connections. So like overall, I'm guessing my viewpoint on like defining relationships, hookup culture, dating culture have evolved um, as like society has changed. And so you calling in like I really I really am looking for ways that we can like say, hey, like maybe this is just an enthusiastic young man who like at his core, like again, all the things that you liked and learn about him know about him are great but like he just kind of goes about falling in love a little differently and i could see myself in him i'm sure i also can see myself in you like i guess it just depends on the situation but how again how he handled this how he handled this will tell us mostly what we need to know about his emotional maturity level right so he could be a really well-intentioned guy you know 
you know, it sounds like you are familiar with his upbringing, his family, pro, you know, and so, well, there's no guarantees, but like you have a pretty good guess of maybe some of his core principles, you know, you can make maybe more assumptions about him than you would say a stranger, right? And so, but to your point, you don't really know him. You want to get to know him. These are all very reasonable things. He's excited about you. And again, we have to figure out because listen, to move just for you is intense. It's a little aggressive. It's a little weird, right? But as you're telling like a story and I'm thinking about what advice I might tell you and things like that, I'm thinking, you know, listen, so much dep depends on the outcome, you know, in terms of how we perceive things, right? Uh, I always joke, like the difference between a guy being like really charismatic and charming and a guy being creepy is the difference of like, how tall is he? You know, or how his delivery or whether how much you like or enjoy being hidden about. If you don't enjoy it, it's probably creepy and unwanted. If you do enjoy it, like, you know, if the right guy says something to you, you can, he can say anything, you know, you're just excited. He's talking to you, right? It's just a matter of perception. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you could tell this story of like, yeah, we went on a second date and he moved out for me like two years from now, you guys are in a great relationship. It's healthier than ever. You're thinking about engagement. Like that sounds like a crazy cool story. Right. Or for everyone listening right now, we're like, I don't know, kind of weird. I think you should run, you know, like it could go either way. Right. And so, so much of it is just like figuring out his emotional maturity level because he can be intense, right? There is a world where his contrast in terms of his personality to yours could be a great thing, right? Like we don't want to find people just like us that would annoy the fuck out of us. Like we don't like ourselves yeah. that much, honestly, when we break it down, like when we look in the mirror and like really look inside, it's like, oh my God, it's you again. You know what I'm saying? So, but you do want to have, yeah. like, to your point, you want to share, you, you want to have, you want to be compatible. You want to have like interest is something I have learned in my life is like how much I just appreciate that Nally and I like, like watching the same shit, like eating the same foods. We have a general similarity in how we like to spend our, uh, alone time and quiet time. There's a million things that are different about Nally and versus me. And you know what I'm saying? But competitive at the same time, yeah, I like that Nally can like is has a different personality, interacts with people a lot differently than I do. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I feel like she can pick up some of my weaknesses and vice versa, right? So ideally you want to find both, right? So there's a world where his outgoingness, his extroverted personality, I honestly like will I will use I, I use Natalie. Like I, you know, like it's she's more outgoing. She's more personal. She's more likable. I'm like, I go to a crowd and I just like, I don't want to fucking talk to anyone. So I'll be like, Hey, but I, I want to network. I, I sometimes I want to meet people. Right. And sometimes I, you know, I don't know what to fucking say. I clam up my anxiety, whatever. And so like, yeah, Natalie is just like, I'm like, Hey, Natalie, let's go talk to this. And I'm basically telling Natalie to go like introduce herself because she's, you know, Mrs. Personality, right? And so maybe that could be you guys and you could really learn to appreciate what he brings to the table. But only if right now you find out that he has the emotional maturity to recognize that like, well, this is his way, you have your way. And if he is interested in getting to know you, he needs to either a, first decide whether like, listen, do, does he want to bother with someone who like is different in the, in the ways he's discovering? Like I said, he has every right at this point to be like, let me think about it. I don't know if I want to date you. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. uh, or, you know, he's like, listen, I really like you. And like, yeah, I, I wish you were more excited, but I get it. Like, I will listen. He needs to recognize his decision to move to your city is intense. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, mm -hmm. the delusion makes you nervous. If you can, yes. the intensity can be really attractive, you know, as long as someone like is aware of how it can come across. I'm yeah. just rambling at this point. I don't think you answered me uh, as to why uh, he's thinking about it. Yeah, I think there's been a lot of, like I mentioned, kind of with him and I's dynamic already of him feeling like he's being more complimentary, being more affectionate, et cetera. Like we've, all, we've had a lot of hard conversations about that as well. I think he's thinking about it just because I think there's been a lot of like, analyzing over analyzing our relationship already to where i think yeah he's just deciding if like i'm even the right person for him i think and that's fair and, I, and honestly yeah. that's a green flag for me honestly from him listen i think there's some immaturity there you know him you're you're kind of vouching for him i know nothing about this guy but like i have been impulsive i have been intense you know i think i got it more out of my system in my earlier 20s but 
you know, I also like, I think people are getting into their first uh, relationships later in life. Do you know his relationship history? Yeah. And that's another thing. I've been in like pretty much like maybe one other relationship, maybe. And he's been in like relationships since he was like 12. So I think right, he's so a lot more accustomed to this process than me. Yeah. But again, that's another thing he needs to recognize. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, like and, I, it, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, I guess in every relationship, there's a balance between challenging your partner and being there for your partner. You know, here you you're especially in moments of discomfort. Right. So here you are expressing discomfort. I'm uncomfortable with our pace. Right. <laughs> Like, I don't know if you're watching this season of The Bachelorette, but like when this guy is like sad was this like jump and she was like nervous. Like there was a difference between being like, hey, you know, like you being supportive, empathetic and like motivation versus, versus like we're jumping today and you're going to thank me later. Like, whoa. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> um, you know what I'm saying? So like right now to me, I don't know. Like, I think it would be more important for him to just acknowledge his intensity and validate your discomfort without it even just from his sake, if I'm just his buddy, it's just like, dude, you're just, you're, you might be coming across a little intense, you know, Yeah, 100%. Like you moved across the country for her. That's like, what, like, that's a lot for anything. What he needs to do to make you feel more comfortable. Like if all he said to you was like, Hey, listen, like, I'm not going to pretend I don't like you. I really like you. Do you want to be my girlfriend? Great. Amazing. And like, listen, I want to hang out with you, but just know that like, I'm an adventurous guy. I hope if it's like me moving here is throwing for you a loop, you owe me nothing. You know, like our relationship and like how fast this move forward isn't dictated by the fact that I moved here for you. The, the only thing that makes you uncomfortable with him moving to your city, I'm guessing, and correct me if I'm wrong, is the like uncommunicated expectation of this like, I moved here for us. And you're thinking like, mm -hmm. I didn't ask you to. And you're in the back of your mind always wondering when is the like bill coming due as opposed to like, let's, I, I'll, you know, you meet someone in your town, you meet them at a bar, you exchange numbers, you know, a couple of days you text for a while, maybe you go on a date. And I'm not saying this is the pace people should be going at, but then three weeks later you text again when you're bored or something. And here he's just like, I moved for you. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, and so if he were to just say that to you, you'd probably feel, I'm guessing, a lot better by saying, I didn't do this for you. I did this, you know, you you definitely were a big reason. I'm not going to pretend that that's not the case, but like, I want to move and I'm adventurous and blah, 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 blah. But I don't know if that's the mm -hmm. case. That's another issue. I feel like that hasn't really been acknowledged. It's more like he just picked up and moved and has expected this relationship to just like continue on as if nothing happened. Can I, um, so while you're talking right now, like I'll, I'm selfishly like wish, I wish he was here. And since he is, uh, yeah. and since he's so intense and enthusiastic and since he fucking moved across the country to do this, you think he'd want some feedback. Cause almost like if I'm answering again through the lens of like, I wish these crazy kids could figure this out because like people have a hard enough time meeting people. And it does like, to me, I would be like, what, why, like. Why are you fucking up this part of the of the relationship? This is all meaningless. This is all kind of like nothing. Like the question, like why are you being like chill out? Just calm calm the fuck down. As someone who has mm -hmm. been too intense at times, or just like listen, like we've all been intense. I don't know what the reason is. I don't know what it is past trauma or whatever. Maybe he's just used to relationships, but like clearly he feels the need to like solidify a relationship, and he likes just being in relationships. And there's a part of him is just doing it because he likes the tradition and the routine. It's like why I like like waking up and having a cup of coffee. It's more about the like the routine of the coffee. There's a little bit of that when it comes to being in a relationship. And you're just like I want to I want to be with you, right? I want to get yeah. to know you. I I can kind of I guess end off with this question. I feel like a huge part of like the stumbling block for me has been we hung out twice and. I enjoyed my time, but still wasn't totally sure how I felt about him fully. Wasn't totally sure um, I like really like this guy. Do you think that if I truly did like him enough, like I would be responding to him moving differently? No, no. As you've pointed out, you know more about who he was than who he is. And what you've learned about who he is early on, you liked. It was nice. First couple of nice dates. Great. Interesting getting to know more. And then he did all this right said he wanted to move ignored the fact that you didn't want to did it anyways fine you don't own the city but then like again he's just like playing house with you 
and you're trying to say, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, and he is just like, uh, I don't know if I want to whoa, 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 whoa. And like, that is you like, keep in mind, this is information. You are learning about him again, still in, you know, it's so new. It's so little that like most of the, you're still making assumptions. But like what, what we're learning about him isn't great so far. Doesn't mean, you know, if nothing else, it just shows that maybe he's a little emotionally immature. He likes the idea of relationships more than relationships itself. He wouldn't be alone in that. I really think, you know, I talk all the time about like, I really didn't know who I was until I was like 28. And I think most of, if I had to like, you know, summarize as why is, is I, th I think like I, I focus so much on trying to like find what my parents had and find a wife and have a kid and blah, blah, blah. It was more about that than like who it was with, you know, like he just needs to grow up a little bit. Right. Yeah. So no, I don't think if you liked him more and you're the lady in this uh, equation, but I just feel like any guy, I don't care how much you like him when a guy gets a little intense and a little possessive, or at least gives the illusion of that, it can be a little icky at times and put up some red, you know, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. And he's giving, sure. a, he's giving a little bit of that and you just have to find out. But uh, well, how long is he thinking about this, by the way? How long has he thought about moving? No, no, no. When he was like, oh, I need to think sorry. about this. When was this? How long ago? When, how, was he... Uh, he said that he'll get back to me in like a few days. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't think he's this is your guy. I mean, like, that sounds stupid and it sounds a little honestly very I don't know, maybe 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 it's just like how people date I, I see I hear this more and more where people are like, I'll get back to you and people literally like wait a couple days. I don't like I don't know, what is he getting <laughs> like what is he thinking yeah, I about? I don't know. Like what is he what is he thinking about on his own that he wouldn't better off learn from just having a conversation with you? Cause yeah, I don't know. At any point, if you either of you decide, like, I don't know, I don't, I don't think this is going anywhere, you obviously can end it, right? But for two people who don't know much about each other, I don't know what you're considering about one another on your own. You mm -hmm. know what I'm I would think there would be this be a call, be like, hey, listen, while I'm considering, I do have like three or four questions. No one I would yeah. do that. But like, yeah, you guys should, when it comes to you two and figuring out if there is a future or what to do about a future, I think you guys should, that's a two person conversation. It seems yeah. like short of you just like internally deciding, I don't know, I'm not into this person and it's not worth it or whatever the reason why. As of this moment, what's, what are you deciding on? I think I'm deciding whether or not I want to stay with him too. I think just kind of like what you said, it, it will come down to if he is able to scale back to the level I want yeah. without holding it against me or not. Also just like, I don't know, like, it's a very spontaneous decision to move across the country. And also he doesn't, he didn't get a job either. So he's looking for one time here. I just think that's not a smart decision. I think that's a dumb decision. I think if any of my friends came to me and said, Hey, I'm moving for a guy that I've hung out with twice that isn't fully sure how they feel about me. Also, I don't even have a job there yet. Like I would think that was dumb. I would tell them not to do it. And so it's like, uh, yeah, sure. Do I want to be with someone that makes that decision. I think the answer to that question has a lot more to do with other variables. Like I said, I mean, I don't want to poo-poo people who are adventurous, who bet on themselves. You know, being 26 is the time in your life to like move across the country with a buddy because you can. And even if it's like, uh, if, if a girl is the catalyst, like I think honestly, not to sound cheesy, but like I think the war world needs a little bit more of that. Yeah. That being said, again, it just all matters in terms of like how he goes about this. Mm -hmm. Right now, the more information I learn about him, the more I'm thinking like he's probably not your guy. He's a little impulsive, doesn't have the self-awareness to recognize that like how it might come across. Like I, I wish I was like this guy's like older brother, mentor, friend, whatever, guardian angel, because I'd want to say, hey man, like, because to me, at the risk of sounding condescending, this sounds stupid. Like, mm -hmm. what, like, like when I, what I mean by that is that like, it, this call started with like, what seemed like a really cute story about like two people who knew each other as teenagers. And it was like a few misconnections. You cross paths as an adult. There's still, you know, there's a mutual attraction there. There's an interest there. And like, what a great, what a great story. And then, then it's just like, you know, that like chapter three, he's actually weird. Uh, and there's this dark thing, you know, whatever. But again, being, I've been the overzealous, you know, person. And so the big question is, is he having a moment of immaturity? Does he need to learn a little bit? Does someone need to say to him, Hey man, like, 
chill the fuck out, man. Like, I'm glad you moved. This is great. But like this, if anyone, like you said, like this can come across as just very aggressive and like you're the guy in this situation and call it what you want, double standards or not. Like you need to be a little bit more mindful of like your aggression and your relationship with this woman, you know? And play it cool a little bit, man. Like, also, like, it's totally normal for her to, like, want to slow down. Like, she already committed to being your girlfriend compared to, like, I don't know how many other people out there. You got way more than most people in 2024 would even, like, offer at this point after two dates. And so you got that. So why don't you just chill the fuck out and maybe, like, back yeah. off, hang out with your buddy. Maybe not just in, you know, like, you're you're kind of suffocating her entire world in space. So like chill out, play a little bit harder to get, you know, honestly, I'd, I would probably tell him like, make her wonder, get to know this person, like, and be open to the possibility, both of you that you like, you might like grow to realize that while well, great, you're not each other's persons, but like you have to learn and get to know each other and you can still enjoy each other along the way. But what you're trying to do is just be husband and wife because you had two good dates. And that's weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think a lot of this for him has been romanticized because obviously we had first met a long time ago, but according to him, like he's really thought about me a lot in between. And so I think it's a bit of like an infatuation situation of like, maybe so. I don't know. Listen, I, yeah. as someone who completely empathizes with your situation and your point of view and how it comes across while simultaneously, like, trying to empathize with him and recognizing that like i've been him before you know mm-hmm. and a lot of this can be solved with communication first you just have to decide whether like how interested are you and like are you able to say hey listen like again like agree to disagree we clearly have our differences i told you i was a little uncomfortable with you moving out i don't know why this is coming to any big shock to you but i do like yeah. you like in the how you that you have to be able to thread the needle the difficult position you're in in communicating with him is that, you know, as you know, men can be sensitive, just if not more sensitive than women in communication. Uh, they're very fragile at times. I think sometimes women can forget that and be rather direct uh, and call them names or call them weird or say that's weird or like, ew, gross, things like that. And men can get very self-conscious and very defensive in those moments. So you have to be able to communicate to him something like, again, lead with love. I really like you. I do. I'm like, honestly, like I wouldn't have agreed to be your girlfriend if I didn't like you. So like I do, but like I told you before, like I wasn't comfortable with you moving out here, but I don't own this city. Like I love that you're, I also love that you're adventurous, but like we are clearly not on the same page here, but like, I do really like you. And it seems silly that we would stop getting to know each other just because I'm not ready to meet your level yet, but like, that's a, that's for you to decide. And, and it's, it's a little bit of playing that game of like saying you like him, communicating mm-hmm. a, a willingness to work on things while simultaneously acting like, listen, well, if we decide not, I don't like, it's like, I want to do this deal, but if we don't do this deal, I'll be okay. Yeah. But I'd like to do the deal. Mm-hmm. But if you give me a bad deal, I won't take the deal mm-hmm. and I'll, and I'll live. And like, you know, it's playing that game a little bit. So I don't know. Yeah. Only, only if you want to. Maybe you're just like over it already. Yeah. I'm kind of over just all the whirlwind things that have gone into this. But like, I, like I've said, and like you said, like, I do see some potential. Like, I think we could balance each other out really well. And if we could get to the point where we just are literally dating like going on dates, getting to know each other, not assuming we know each other in like a non-pressured environment. Like I could do that. So yeah. Yeah. I think (laughs) if I were you, my advice is you have nothing to lose to try to communicate this one more time. If nothing, if for no other reason, it's good practice to have these conversations. Mm-hmm. If if I had to guess what the outcome would be, if I'm just being realistic, despite my hope that you crazy kids can figure this out and fall in love, is that like uh, I I eventually grew up and realized that maybe I was just acting a little bit too Im- immature and that like I was justifying my intensity because I was being so romantic and things like that. Mm-hmm. And it was like, I was, you know, I didn't figure that overnight. And quite honestly, it took me a few years. Uh, and it took uh, some tough lessons in between 
uh, to learn that. And I think you might have to reject him and he might have to be rejected a few more times. And he will have to like look in the mirror and realize that like, despite him being Casanova and willing to move for a girl and willing to do this, that like yeah. he might need to like tweak some things and, and mature a little bit. And he's not a finished product is my guess. Yeah. And I know you've mentioned like love martyrs before. Like, I feel like he plays off like he's such a love martyr, yeah. like moving across the country and like yeah. fighting for this. And like, I don't know, that's honestly, that's not ever what I wanted. I just wanted to get to know the guy and like have fun yeah. and yeah. like not overanalyze this. You're thinking it's 2024. I, my FaceTime works. It's fine. Yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty normalized. <laughs> No, I yeah. mean, I, I laugh because I still remember I'm aging myself, but I remember meeting a girl who lived in a different city. And this was 2012, 13 or something. FaceTime was a thing. It had been out for at least a year, maybe even two. Like we had had it for a while, but no one fucking used it. It was like the biggest social ick. You just did not FaceTime people. And I had talked to this girl who lived in a different city multiple times a week we had this great little like long distance love affair and we never fucking facetime and one time i did she's like what are you doing ew and now it's like it's the most normal thing it's just like it's crazy when you think about it anyways it is normal yeah. now and you're thinking we could just do this over facetime and we could probably figure out a lot of our like likes and interests and dislikes and you don't need to move i can get yeah. on a plane you know but i digress yeah. give it one more shot you have nothing to lose, but don't be a dick when you communicate your frustrations and when you criticize him, criticize him is just like he's fragile and like a child, you're trying not, you're trying not to hurt his feelings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyways, I hope this was helpful. Um, yeah, it was. Big takeaway is your feelings are more than valid. It has nothing to do with how much you like him or not. His response to all of this is a part of you getting to know him and you have to account for that. So you are learning more things about what you don't like than what you used to like. That matters. But like, this is all silly in the grand scheme of things. Uh, but my guess is despite how much you mean to communicate it, he's going to it's going to take him a few years to realize uh, his immaturity. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And like you said, I'll, I'll try to have one more conversation with him and, and see what he says. And if not, like this might just not be worth it for me. Yeah, totally. And I think you just say that, listen, I really like you. I want, I'd love to figure this out. Uh, we clearly have some differences in how we get to know each other, but like, I kind of need this from you, but like, if you don't want to, you know, if you don't, if you don't want to work it out, then maybe we should just move on. But this also seems kind of silly because like there clearly is a lot of good here. So mm -hmm. I hope that's yeah. cool with you and we'll see, yeah. see what he says. Well, we'd love an update. We'd uh, love to, to know what you decide. Yeah, I, I'll definitely give you an update as soon as we talk. So, and as soon as he figures out what he wants to do. So. Regardless of what you guys decide, I would love to check in with this guy uh and maybe i, can I could see if he maybe i could save him a good like five years of of struggles if he's willing to get some tough feedback um yeah yeah uh, i mean i'll ask him he might be honestly open to that so uh, <laughs> i'll let you know he, so let's see, he sounds like he has a lot of potential and he's you know he needs to chill out a little bit yeah it's a good way to put it <laughs> um all right well let us know i will all thank right. you so much thanks for the call all right talk to you later bye this episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Listen, we talk about therapy all the time on the show, how beneficial it can be to your mental health. We all know the reasons why it can be challenging to jump into therapy. It can be costly. It can feel inconvenient. It's also just a challenge sometimes to find a therapist that connects with you. Well, BetterHelp helps with all of those things. It's more affordable than in-person therapy. It's incredibly convenient. You can do it from your phone. You can do it from your tablet. You can do it voice to voice, super easy to do with BetterHelp. Plus, they're working with thousands of new therapists every day, helping ensure that you are working with a therapist that you feel with, comfortable with, that you connect with. You can switch therapists anytime with BetterHelp. They make the process super easy, convenient. Listen, if you are investing in all our aspects of your wellness, like eating right or working out, your mental health is just as important 
Because if you can't think clearly, if you're investing your energy in the wrong spaces, in the wrong places, it will take up so much other beneficial uh, time that you could be spending with loved ones, with yourself. So whatever the stresses of your life are, work, relationship, family, money, doesn't really matter. Check out BetterHelp. Rediscover your curiosity with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash V-I-A-L-L today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Again, that's BetterHelp.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Therapy can help you get more, feel more present, help you just kind of resolve problems. It, there's so many great benefits to it. So we are up at the lake right now, and we have a friend of ours staying at our house, hanging with the dogs, watching the house. And she texted me and said, oh, my gosh, your bed is insane. She's sleeping in our bed. And she's like, this is the most comfortable bed I've ever slept in. What is this mattress? I need to know. I need to get it for my house. And I said, Helix Sleep. Happens to be the Moonlight mattress. Well, and just so you know, Will, we are very... We do have a comfortable bed. We are just two specific people. Helix has a lineup of over 20 unique mattresses for all kinds of sleepers, side sleepers, back sleepers, stomach sleepers, big and tall sleepers, kid sleepers. Helix has, has them covered as well. Helix is the award-winning mattress. They have their award-winning Lux and Ultra Premium Elite collections. They also, again, have mattresses for those big and tall sleepers and those mattresses for kids. They're so confident in how kick-butt their mattresses are. They give you a 100-night sleep trial on it. You can sleep on it for 100 nights. And if you don't like it, you can send it back. Also, all their mattresses come with a, between a 10 and 15 year warranty. And why? I don't know, because ours is good as new. But it does. It does. They stand by their product. It is awesome. And if you don't believe us, which would be crazy, they were rewarded number one mattress by both GQ and Wired Magazine for uh, best mattress and are recommended by leading chiropractors and doctors of sleep medicine as the go-to solution for improving your sleep. Helix is offering up to 25% off all mattress orders and two free pillows. For our listeners, go to helixsleep.com slash V-I-A-L-L. That is helixsleep.com slash V-I-A-L-L. With Helix, better sleep starts now. How's it going? Hi, doing well. How are you, Nick? Good. What's your name? Great. I'm Alicia, um, 29. How can I help? I blacked out and ruined my relationship. Okay. What did you do while you were blacked out? Okay. So I lost phone and keys and uh wallet purse everything so i walked over to his apartment because he's my neighbor um looking for help and ended up just being completely sloppy and belligerent and embarrassed myself okay how long have you been dating for four three months originally took some time off and four months the second round so this all happened after you knew each other for seven eight months yeah i mean at that point it was a year yeah a year Okay. So other than being a sloppy drunk, what did you do while you blacked out? Well, from what I was told, um, I think I was just like disrespecting boundaries. Like I was aggressive, not like physically or anything like that, but I think I was just like very hyper. Um, you were annoying. Very annoying. Yes, yeah. exactly. I think I kept trying to kiss him um, and it was in front of his, I think he had a friend or two over. Um so that was embarrassing. I think there was one point in the night when I went to go get changed. And this is all what I'm told. I just want to preface this. Everyone I've told this to is completely shocked because I am very, I'm not aggressive. I am not intrusive at all. Um, so and then another a, time, again, to be clear, you didn't like force yourself on him or physically assault him. You tried to kiss your boyfriend, whatever. I, but it sounds well, like you were really fucking annoying. Yeah. And well, he said that aggressive. I would. He said, if I did what you did, I'd be in jail. So that makes me think that I was probably kind of aggressive and like not. I mean, what does he mean by that? Like, I think I just kept like going in for the kiss or like trying to cuddle or something okay. like that. Good. Okay. Great. Well, you're not him and it's different and whatever. And like, I'm not, but like. Well, okay. But then he did say he wasn't giving a ton of details. I was trying to force it out because I was having a panic attack the next morning. And he said that I came out i think i either was like scantily clad or missing articles of clothing kind of thing like so what I, don't know. I guess here here's what i'm trying to figure out right you know because like what did you do you know versus like were you just kind of fucking annoying and sure maybe it embarrassed him a little bit but like yeah, i think it definitely that was. in well, itself I isn't like like that didn't ruin your relationship like is it an excuse for him to break up with you? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> um, had he been on the fence about you before? Possibly. But like, if everything else was great, 
in a year into your relationship, you had this out of pocket night where you clearly drank too much, uh, behaved in a way that you certainly have to like apologize for. Yeah. Um, of course. Uh, but really there were no real victims and he was just really annoyed by your behavior and embarrassed by your behavior. Um, yeah. And that's kind of the question. And the more I hear, it feels like it's, you know, like you didn't. What? Well, okay. To be fair, I think he basically said this is like the third strike because there was another night we were out at the bars and I was super touchy feely. My love language is physical touch. I think I drank too much and I was, I think embarrassing him again by like going and kiss, holding his hand, all that stuff. Then a few months later, I had called him multiple times when I was drunk, like eight times in a row. Or no, I think I texted like eight times and I called a couple times um, mm-hmm. after a night out. And so he said this is the final strike that it was like so alarming and so freaky that I showed up. Um, well, uh, so how many times? Time, okay, five. so wait, this is a little Three bit more. Con- this is more context. <laughs> and uh, listen, like. You are talking to someone who this is, you know, I'm willing to say this is a me problem, but like I get really turned off by really drunk people in general. Yeah. And in a dating situation, it's a huge t- turn off for me. Yeah. Right. Is he a big drinker? Yeah. He is. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and I, I don't really know. I, maybe. maybe, maybe. I, I guess I haven't pulled a lot of my heavy drinker buddies. But maybe just drunk chicks in general are annoying. I don't know. Yeah, I think that might be it. I don't um, know. Yeah. Um, but certainly women have had to deal with plenty of drunk, obnoxious men. So I guess, and that's just my question. It's just like, if every once in a while you get a little annoying, but like that's all you are is a little annoying and you chalk it up to too much alcohol, but ultimately it doesn't seem like you have a consumption problem maybe like you're just a bit of a lightweight who doesn't respond well to alcohol. And as a result, yeah. like pick your spots, you know, when okay. it comes to drinking heavy. Uh, yeah. yeah. I don't know. At the end of the day, I guess my point is, is like, I appreciate the punchy headline, but you should not allow yourself to think that this is all because of this one night okay, or even three nights and that you need to live with this like huge, re- what did I do? This amazing, like I had every, I, I found my person and if I could just go take this one night back, <laughs> you know, my life would all be different. Like, I hope you're not going there. Yeah. I guess I'm just trying to get out of the shame spiral because I'm mortified and really humiliated that I well, showed up at someone's home. Like that feels like. Well, well, fine. Be mortified. Mortified. You de- like, it's not like, listen, I haven't in the past year, three different times acted in a way while drunk that I had to be like. Sorry, I was a little annoying. Yeah. And texting a guy like eight times is a little extreme. You know, <laughs> you're right. Your, your, your boyfriend or your ex, whatever. Yeah, you know, think about it. You get a, a drunk guy sends you like 10 fucking unsolicited texts. You're like, this guy's <laughs> fucking weird and intense. And I'm, I don't like, you know, you would, you may have some strong opinions. So listen, yeah. I guess my point is, is like, okay, if you are, if this is truly bo- this behavior, you don't like being judged for this behavior, do something about it. I've had friends who had to give up drinking whiskey because of how they get drunk drinking whiskey. Uh, or I've had friends who had just been like, I, I can drink, but now I have to not do shots because I get drunk too fast. You know, I don't know. Don't drink on an empty stomach. Or, you know, mm-hmm. or if you're going to get loose tonight, like have some friends just, I don't know, make it impossible for you to reach out or like go over to your boyfriend's house. Yeah. I don't know. Have some guardrails in place. You know, these, but yeah. these are, this doesn't sound like a serious problem. It sounds right. like kind of, a thing that you do that's a little annoying and you haven't really put up any safeguards to prevent yourself from doing this from time yeah. to time. I guess also, yeah, there were definitely red flags prior to this. Um, like, I'm curious your take on this. If you were to go on like a vacation, he would not text me for like two or three days, um, which I tried to be calm about. But then when he would return, he would then tell me like, oh yeah, we were with these girls every night, but like, don't worry, they weren't that hot. So you don't have anything to worry about. Or like, oh yeah, they weren't hot. So I just went home instead of going out to the bars, like little things like that, that just played yeah, the weird. out. Yeah. Weird. And then also, I think, by like, the way, like any guy who says to you strike two or strike three, <laughs> ick, like you're not what, like he's not your, co- you're not a coach. He's not a coach. He's not your yeah. boss. You're not trying out for his team. 
yeah. you know, like it's a relationship. But like, and he could be turned off. He has every right to do, but just the way he talks, it's just how he talks. Yeah. Like I would, fi I find that to be a little like entitled. A hundred percent. But it does track with his like, yeah, no, uh, if you're in a committed relationship, in fact, when he travels, he should almost over communicate, not under communicate. I don't know what your comfort level is with like his behavior, but in an exclusive relationship, you have the right to say, I'm not comfortable with you like going out and hanging out with a bunch of women. Like again, yeah. like I don't know if he's there for work and if women, you know, he can socialize and he can still be, you know, but like even saying things like that at best case, him saying that is him enjoying getting you jealous. If for, for no other reason he likes to get you jealous. Mm -hmm. What is that? Like, that's a bit of a control, you know? Like, I, when I we, don't even think it's that. I think it's just ignorance. I don't even think it's realizing. I don't know. I, I, don't know. I think you maybe are giving a little bit too much credit. Oh. Uh, or not enough, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I don't, think, I don't think he's that. Is he, is he stupid? No, no. Okay, then maybe he realizes that, I don't know, that's a dick thing to say to someone you're in a relationship yeah, with. Yeah, there were a lot, of, a lot of those throughout the, throughout the relationship. But I think this... Maybe, yeah, maybe he doesn't realize he's a dick. I don't know. I guess that's possible, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So maybe this was just looking for a way How old out. is he? <laughs> um, 31. Okay, so he's not that young, you know? <laughs> yeah, he could yeah. still be immature, but like, yeah, you know. Um, so probably looking for a way out. I've just been beating myself up. So that's why I am, and I'm just mortified. So, and I felt like a, like, violator or like a, you know, I felt super inappropriate and just really, really bad about it. Um, well, two things can be true at the same time. You can, <laughs> again, have been annoying and made a mistake and he had the right to be annoyed and he had the right to be frustrated at you. Yeah. But the more we learn about him, it doesn't sound like you're losing the greatest guy in the world. Yeah. And it sounds like there were some red flags here of things that you kind of just chose to accept or, or ignore or not trust your instincts or gut on. So maybe... Well, I think do more of that. That kind of leads me to my other question. I have a super anxious attachment style, so I never know if it's gut or it's just my anxious attachment style, like looking for something to be nervous and freak out about. Is there a way to decipher that or distinguish uh, which, which I don't, which I don't is? pretend to be an expert when it comes to attachment style disorder, attachment style disorders. Okay. I think most people, um, without knowing anything about anxious, so maybe I'm totally fucking wrong, but uh, I'd be willing to guess that what you do is you talk yourself out of trusting your gut and then you accept yeah. a lot of shitty behavior because you keep saying, well, I'm anxious attachment. Yeah. So to me, it's not, I would be, I'd guess, I'd be willing to guess that you have green lighted some bad behavior and you have used your anxious attachment as an excuse as to why you shouldn't trust your own gut. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. And sometimes I feel like when people know their attachment styles, that is all that really happens. <laughs> it's like an overdiagnose of yourself. And then, you know, again, like maybe you are anxious attachment. That doesn't mean that you don't have the ability to trust your instincts or your gut. Okay. Ever. You know, mm -hmm. again, not a therapist, not an expert. I, and I'm, I'm basing this guess off the fact that like most people would recognize that when their boyfriend goes out of town, and disappears for any lengthy period of time, that's a red flag. And two, right. I think it's a weird thing to say to your partner, even in a joking way, um, Im implying that they should be lucky that you didn't flirt with or, or, or that someone wasn't hot enough for them to like make you feel insecure about yourself. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, I think, our, I think partners should go out of their way to make their partners feel secure. Mm -hmm. Like regard, I, I'm 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 unaware of any partner I've ever dated their attachment style. I I I don't know. I've never literally thought about Natalie's. I'm aware of Natalie's trauma and triggers and things like that, but I'm unaware of her attachment style. Okay. Um, I only say that because like I've never needed to think about her attachment style to always like go out of my way to make her feel secure when I wasn't with her. Or I was out in an environment that, you know, might have other women around and things like that. And that's just a choice people can make in relationships, whether they want to make their partners feel secure or jealous. Okay. And, and both men and women do it. Um, and I think you have enough common sense and intelligence, regardless of your attachment style, to know 
the difference between if someone yeah. is making you feel secure and what a secure feeling is, and if someone's trying to make you jealous. Right. Regardless of your attachment style, I think you can still say, I want a partner that when they do go out, wants to talk to me. When they do travel, yeah. wants to communicate with me. Uh, they don't have to be obsessed with me, but like, I want them to stay connected to me and I want them to want yeah. to do that. You know? Yeah. So you can say that you want that and then you can ask yourself, is my partner doing that? And when they don't do that, you can have a problem with it. Okay. Regardless of your attachment style. And so I never know if it's overreacting or if it makes me look jealous and insecure or if it's rational and warranted. I think that's where I get nervous. Well, again, in the heat of the moment, we all can overreact. But again, I, I, I don't think you're giving yourself enough credit. I think you can take a breath. You can calm down whenever that is. The sooner the better for anyone. Mm -hmm. And then you can ask yourself, like, what would I, do? you know, the easiest way to like try to be rational is to truly honestly ask yourself and put yourself in their shoes. How would yeah. I feel? What would I do? And not try to be right. Just honestly ask yourself. And if you're like, well, <laughs> I would want them to know that like they have nothing to worry about. I'd want to reach out to them. Yeah. I would tell them I'd miss them. I would yeah. check in. I would like someone to do that for me. Is he doing yep. that? Yes or no? You know what I'm saying? You can literally just right. do the, you know, you don't have to get in your head yeah. and ask yourself, am I okay to wonder if he should be <laughs> talking to me? It's just like, of course yeah. you are. Okay. You yeah. know? And you know that because yeah. you like, right. It's not, that's not weird. What would, uh, what's the crazy version of that? I mean, the crazy version would be like, yeah, just accusing him of doing something just because mm -hmm. he like didn't call you for an hour or something. Okay. Yeah. You know, crazy is like texting eight times. <laughs> yeah. Texting eight times or demanding <laughs> that he checks in every half hour on the hour or whatever, okay. you know, like just unreasonable yeah. expectations, but there's a middle ground between not reaching out to you for six hours. And I think he said, you said something like two days Yeah. versus like, you know, the other at, opposite end of the spectrum. Okay. All right. Yeah. Are you in therapy? Yes. Yeah, I just started. Great. Are you talking yeah. with your therapist about your your lack of trust in your instincts? Yes. Because rather than talk about your attachment style, which you can go nuts if your therapist wants. I mean, I don't. No, no, I haven't even. I given, just, I, I given a name or anything. I see a lot of people go online and diagnose themselves mm -hmm. by a bunch of shit they see on the internet, or even get diagnosed by the therapist. I was actually talking to Natalie about this. I get an opportunity to talk to you for you know twenty, thirty, forty minutes, right? And you tell me what you're struggling with. I tell you my opinion. I see a lot of people, and I, you know, I like to think my advice is solid. I think a lot of people will listen to my advice and they'll say, hey, that resonates with me. I, you know, and whether it's good advice or not, they seem to think it in, in that moment. And then we do our, our follow-up calls. And I will say, and I think this is the case for everyone, regardless of what they're, if they're talking to me or actual therapists, is I see a lot of people uh, implement re really good advice in a very poor way. You know what I'm saying? Like you can receive good advice, you can hear it and then try to execute on that advice and like do a really bad job of implementing it, you know? Yeah. And I see a lot of people like go online, get advice from a therapist, read about or self-diagnose, you know, again, w using the attachment style as an, the, an example, like you'll understand your nervous attachment, you'll read something. And again, I don't even know if this is a nervous attachment like condition, but like as a nervous attachment, like you constantly second guess yourself or something. Yeah. I don't know, maybe that's a, a bullet point. And so now you tell you you know your anxious attachment. And so you give yourself permission to constantly second guess yourself. Why? Because you find out you found out you're an anxious attachment. And now you've told yourself that you can't ever trust your gut because you're an anxious attachment. So what did that what did that advice what did that information do to you? It made you less confident in who you are. You made, mm -hmm. you know, it, it just gave you more permission to like lean into your, you know, um, yeah. A disorder, if you will. So okay. trust your instincts. I'm guessing okay. we have some good ones. And if nothing yeah. <laughs> else, bounce them off some friends and not friends who are currently struggling in relationships, maybe friends who had struggled mm -hmm. in the past. And maybe they've, they don't have to be in relationships. They just have had to have struggled and, and currently are walking a very like self-fulfilling life. And, and, and maybe that's a good person who to bounce an idea off of in terms of trusting your gut or not. Okay, perfect. But I still think you're, you're better than you realize. Yeah, okay, thank you.
uh, as he, he's like your ex boyfriend now, yeah? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. There's no, there's no going back. <laughs> he Correct. said he had seen too much. Yeah, I, I think, uh, <laughs> I think you found out earlier that this guy's a little um, controlling. Yeah, yeah, I think that's and self centered. Yeah, you know, yes, yeah. I think self centered is there. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. All right, well, good luck out there. Thank you. All right, bye. take care. Bye bye. Wayfair. Wayfair is an online retailer that sells a variety of home goods, including furniture, decor, lighting, and kitchenware. At Wayfair, you'll find everything you need to celebrate the season of sizzle your way. Whether you prefer grilling on the patio or hosting a party in a stadium parking lot. With folding tables, lawn games, coolers, and grills, creating your dream tailgate space on a budget is easier than you think. I didn't even think about tailgating pieces from Wayfair. That's genius. That's so smart. We have so many of their furniture pieces at the studio, at home, in our backyard. Wayfair is the GOAT. They have some really amazing pieces. They have a go-to destination for everything tailgating, no matter your style or budget, everything you need to celebrate game day, whether you're in the lucky spot on your sofa or tailgating in the stadium parking lot. From fan headquarters to the fortress of the grill master, make your space truly yours. Shop grills, patio furniture, cornhole sets, and more go-tos for game day. Wayfair makes it easy with fast and free shipping, even on the big stuff. They'll even help you set it up. I just remember how Wayfair was just absolutely crucial in us getting the studio set up. We had to do it fast. We had to be efficient. And Wayfair was there every step of the way. And the best part, none of their stuff is that hard to build. It's no. all super easy. Comes to you fast. Comes to you. It's it's affordable. It's great. Pick your all-star lineup of tailgating essentials at Wayfair.com or get the Wayfair mobile app. That's W-A-Y-F-A-I-R.com. Wayfair.com. Wayfair. Every style. Every home. Caraway, well, listen, we love cooking and we love cooking everywhere here at the lake or in our home in LA. We have caraway all over our kitchen. We've been cooking with it for over four years now, uh, whether it's their ceramic set or their stainless steel set. We have them both because we love it. It's so easy and great to clean on, easy to clean. Nelly loves that. She won't clean on anything other than caraway. She just really hates doing pots and pans, but you know, at least caraway makes it easy for her. Exactly. My favorite thing is the dishwasher. And so the fact that I can take these pots and pans and easily do like a two scrub and they're clean. Oh my gosh, magic. But the really great thing is how safe they are. Caraway products are made without any toxic materials like PFAs, PTFEs, PFOAs, or the other hard to pronounce chemicals, which it is crazy to think how that is the case with many other pots and pans out there. Like so many that aren't safe for you to use will not with Caraway. So safe, so easy to clean, so great to cook on. I am very picky with my cooking uh, pots and pans. Like that makes all the difference in the kitchen. Well, if you l- really like to cook, and I we cook, I cook five days a week, always on Caraway. Gotta have it, gotta love it. Whether it's again at the lake or in LA, we're cooking on Caraway. We love it, and so do sixty five thousand other people who have also rated it five stars. They also have great bakeware. Love their bakeware. It's amazing. Cook co- co- cookies. It's great. Warming up pizza. It's muffins. All, muffins. It's all easy to clean on. It's all great. It's all amazing with Caraway. Also, they're decorative. There's so many options to choose from. It's storage really great. Is amazing. The great. organization for amazing. the storage, the way wow. they have it laid out. Oh, so easy. So minimalist. Visit carawayhome.com slash V-I-A-L-L-1-0. Again, that's carawayhome.com slash V-I-A-L-L-1-0 to see all of our favorite products and take an additional 10% off your next purchase. This deal is exclusive for our listeners. So visit carryhome.com slash V-I-A-L-L-1-0 or use code V-I-A-L-L-1-0 at checkout. Caraway non-toxic cookware made modern. How's it going? Hi, Nick. I'm Evie. I'm 40 years old. I have found myself ignoring the guys that are really into me and kind of fleeing the second that they show strong interest. I originally dialed or called in um, because I have been finding myself in a sort of routine pattern. Since my last year's relationship, I find myself spending a lot of time and energy on situationships. I know very early on that the guys are not looking for a girlfriend, and I kind of just let that go in one ear and out the other. And so there was a number of years that I kind of spent doing that. And it was a result of some trauma I kind of went through with my last relationship that I think it was easier for me to kind of just focus on these not so serious guys. And I feel like I've been able to kind of break the pattern of the situationships. And I had a most recent example that kind of just triggered me to the point where I was like, all right, I need to write in and see what's going on because 
therapy and all the conversations with my friends are just not resonating. So I can share with you a little bit more, I guess, about what happened most recently and kind of how I landed on that decision. But sure. that's kind of where I've been at. Tell us about this uh, most recent situation. Yeah. So this guy and I have known each other since high school. Okay. And he was sort of one of the popular guys who was on the football team. I was very quiet in high school and shy and just didn't really come out of my shell until I left for college. And, you know, I thought he was cute then, et cetera, but we never really crossed paths or anything. Years later, we matched on a dating app and we kind of connected. And I was, I just, at that point, I wasn't really attracted to him. He had lost all his hair and I just wasn't as like into him anymore. So I kind of ignored it. But then I would say for like the last five or six years, he's been sliding into my DMs and will just like send me fire emojis and we have to get togethers and all this stuff. And I just kind of have blown it off. He's still in my hometown. And so are a couple of my best friends. And they're always like, you should just give him a chance. Like, you don't know, like maybe you'll feel something, blah, blah, blah. After so many years of disappointed dating, I was like, okay, fine. Like, let me just give it a chance. And so we went out, he met up with us when I was in my hometown about a month ago. And immediately it was just like very forward with how he felt about me and was like, oh my God, you look so good, blah, blah, blah. And my visceral reaction was ill, you know, like I just didn't like that uh, attention. It made me uncomfortable. So to be clear, you weren't that physically attracted to him? No, I wasn't. When a man's very forward and a woman doesn't find him very attractive, it's... Yeah, tend to be exactly. Annoying. Whereas when I'm really attracted to them, if they come on that strong, mm -hmm. it's obviously hot and I'm really into it and I can't wait to see them. But I just wasn't, I wasn't feeling that vibe. Anyway, so he was really insistent on coming up to visit me. I live a couple hours away from him. So he came up a few weeks ago and we went on our first date. And as I'm like walking up to the date, he's just like cheesing. He's just like, oh my God, like so excited for me to be there, which was sweet in some ways, but I still was so unsure about how I felt that it felt like we were on different pages to start. I could already find myself clocking like the ills and the icks. And once I start getting the icks going, it's really hard for me to stop that snowball effect. So we're on the date. The date was fine, but I think his love language is physical touch. And so he was handsy and just like grabbing my leg and my arm and my whatever, just being very complimentary. And I kind of found myself like tensing up. And then after the date, I, you know, I dropped him off because I drove to the date, which he also gave me a lot of shit about like, why do you drive to the date? And I talked to some of my guy friends afterwards. And they were like, I think to him that just like gave him the sign that you weren't looking to spend that much time with him and that you were just kind of getting in and getting out as fast as you could, which I think subconsciously I was already going in with like a, a preconceived you know, idea of how I was going to feel. Anyway, so then after the date, we did kiss and the kiss was nice. I mean, I didn't really feel like, oh my God, like I can't wait to kiss him again. He was like very like, I don't want to say aggressive, but the kiss had like hit a little like, he like bit my, my lip a little bit. And I was like, oh my gosh. But then my friend was like, well, if you think about it, he's been like holding this in for years so maybe he was really excited about it. Question, just to try to, I, I mean, I am curious about um, the situationships and stuff. Did he do anything that was charming and great and wonderful or caring or amazing where you're thinking, what a, just a really amazing guy that I just need to convince to get like in a slightly better shape and, and go see like a hair specialist? <laughs> um, guessing the answer is no. He's not, un he's not unkind. Like he is no, no, really- no, no, I understand that. So I haven't really heard about all the fuck boys and the situationships yeah. <laughs> or whatever, right? But my guess is- it's some version of like, you know, you going after a lot of unavailable men, you know, guys yeah. who say, I'm not looking for a relationship right now. You're physically yeah. attracted to them. Like, obviously, like you want to be validated by the people you find physically attracted to. And then the other end of the spectrum, then you're like, you get screwed over by these guys. They fuck you over. Like, oh my God, like maybe I need to give like these other guys a shot, right? So yeah. like, you know, there's some familiarity. Someone wants to set you up. Meanwhile, you're not physically attracted to him. You don't really find him that charismatic or charming. There's familiarity there that's literally it like you were set up by some friends he flatters yes. you with like thinking that like can't believe he's on a date with you okay i guess that's nice but at the same time like there's a middle ground between having the self-awareness the appropriate boundaries not giving the fuck boys more of your time and attention than they deserve and yeah. then going on the other side of like giving guys that you aren't remotely attracted to at all 
you know, a chance just because the other one's fucked you over. You know what I'm saying? Right. There's a middle yeah. ground here. So like, you don't have yeah. to convince yourself to give guys that you're not remotely attracted to okay. a chance. As a four-year-old woman, if you want to date men around your age, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you might have to date some guys who have less hair. There is that, but there's plenty of bald, good-looking men who know how to, how, to, how to style themselves with less hair, who still look naked, you know what I'm saying? And he had a hot body. Like, I was, there was some part of him that I was attracted to, but I think the memories of him as being kind of like this, like, douchey high school guy that I yeah. heard the last 20 years remember him as. Well, that was, but listen, if you, if you were like, listen, I, I got set up by this guy, you know, we went on two or three dates, and I had the best fucking time. We laughed, he, he, we had conversations quite honestly i haven't had a really long time with a guy and yeah. he's really smooth honestly like i was shocked by just how fucking smooth he is and he's a great kisser and blah 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 blah. but honestly i'm just like not that physically attracted to him i might say like the other shit hasn't worked out for you you seem to yeah. really like this guy there seems to be a lot of good things he's bringing to the table but that's not what i'm hearing i'm hearing like he's kind yeah. of dorky and charming a little creepy gave me a bunch of icks he's losing his hair he definitely <laughs> flattered my ego by making it making me feel like he couldn't believe he was on a date with me. But short of that. Right. Yes. And but there's been a whole lot of that the last few years. And, I, you know, it's I'm meeting people through the apps, which, as you know, can be a crapshoot. You look great. You're an attractive person. Right. So I would imagine you I, I, I would imagine you do very well in the apps. Right. But your problem is, is you're going to attract the fuck boys. Right. You're going to attract the yeah. guys who are very used to getting away with a lot of bad behavior and yeah. your dilemma is is that you like the fuck boys because well they're the hot ones right it'd be a lot easier for you to just probably get good at better setting boundaries with yourself get good at enforcing those boundaries with other people not wasting your time on people who tell you and show you who they are early on and shift through the and, and identify the fuck boys much sooner than you usually do yeah. Then for you to like be a martyr and go out with a bunch of people you're not that into. Right. And I don't know if this is helpful background, but, um, you know, like 10 years ago with my last relationship, it resulted in my dad essentially disowning me because of he just didn't approve of the relationship. <laughs> okay. Um, that's an aggressive. Are you still disowned by your father? Well, both of my parents have since passed away. So did you reconcile? We did. Okay. And it took me some time to reconcile and to forgive him. My parents left the Middle East and I was raised Catholic. And there was always, as I, I know you were too. It's quite a culture shift. Yeah, massive. And it was just like, you will marry a Christian man. Like there's no ifs, ands, or buts. And I fell in love with a Muslim man. And so after that whole issue happened and we broke up, it almost felt like, well, A, I realized in recent therapy work how traumatizing that event was. And also, um, I think maybe it was a defense mechanism to spend so much time in situationships, knowing I wouldn't have to bring any of those people home. Yeah, maybe. I and so I spent a lot of time just like wasting my energy there and being like, well, I just know whoever I bring, they're going to say no to. And even though my dad has passed, I feel like there's still that element of like, well, is he going to approve of this that I need to work on and just not care and kind of do what is right for me? I think where I get stuck is like, well, how much control do I have over this? Like, I know that when I get the ick, the ick snowballs. And I read recently that the ick is actually a self-defense mechanism too. And where should, like, where should you read that from? Some Psychology Today article. <laughs> like, I don't know if it's true. But once the, I get the uh, ick. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I mean, who knows? I'm going to be a psychologist. I just. Yeah. I think it, but, icks are just pet. Again, I don't know how they define icks, but. Yeah. So anyway, I'm just trying to sort out like you know, when I'm starting to feel those icks, is it on me to just kind of work through them when the guy is seemingly good otherwise on paper? If we're just using the example of this guy, he didn't seem that great on paper. It was kind of my point. Just to be clear, he was fine. He was, yeah, fine. He was, he was fine. a totally like, yeah, he was fine. He was, yeah, he was fine. He, yeah. You weren't offended by the fact that your friend set you up, but like you no. weren't into him. That's fine. He didn't, and he didn't bring anything extra to the table. He didn't make up for the fact that you didn't find him to be one of the hotter guys that you've been on a date with. You're open to getting to know people, but like he was totally fine. That's fine. Back to, back to your like, uh, do you think that's why? 
you got into situationships or do you think that was a very believable explanation from an expert who, you know, I guess once you identify the problem, can you do something about the problem? I right. Mean, you know, your father has passed away. I, I don't know. I don't. I also wonder if that's just like, it's a really, that's a better explanation than believing you're going after men who aren't into you. Right, exactly. And I, I do think there is that element of just like wanting what I can't have. And like, uh, it comes from just like wanting to feel. Because let me ask you this. Let me, I'm curious. Not, you know, I, I'm guessing what the more pragmatic, emotionally mature version of you, after some of these fuckboys left your life, you realize that you were glad that they did. But. Yeah. But when they were leaving you and you were a little down bad about it, would you have been willing to call any of these men your boyfriend if they were willing? Yes. Okay. So then I don't know how much the, uh, this is a defense mechanism because of some past trauma with your dad, because like you would have dated them. Yeah. But I almost, but I knew that they wouldn't. Right. Cause they were so clear up front. Like, I don't want a girlfriend. I just broke up with someone. I just want to have fun. Like, well, I don't know what, what internal things. conversations did you have with yourself? You know, when they said that, were you, did you truly believe them? And did you not try to be their girlfriend or did you try to constantly prove to them how great you two could be? And then ev- occasionally check in asking them if they would want to be interested in reconsidering and, and being an exclusive relationship. Yeah. There was some of that with some of them. Okay. Um, yeah, there was definitely some of that. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's like a black and white answer. I'm just, I'm trying to be like introspective and understand how I can maybe shift my approach moving forward. I'm not doing the stuff I was doing five years ago, which was just like wasting months or even a year on a situation ship and getting physical with them and then feeling like devastated when it didn't work out, when it was very obvious from the get-go that it wouldn't. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, 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 I'm sure there's a lot of truth. And again, maybe I'm like I'm not expert here, so take what I say with a grain of salt. But I'm sure there's some truth to the subconscious. I, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in like the subconscious mind and and and, yeah. and, and acknowledge that past traumas play a, a part of our life. But I also think you know a good old fashioned you know needing the validation and having an ego and wanting to you know find a partner that you think is hot as fuck and you're proud that they're your man and uh, yeah. has, you know, charisma and charm and and you feel like there are other ladies in the room that are kind of like envious of your partner. I think that's a very relatable and normal feeling. And I think, you know, you've had a hard time finding, you know, it could just be a, a little bit of that, you know, not necessarily yeah. you're only going after fuck boys because of some past trauma of your father who's since passed and you are... You could be in yeah. a healthy relationship if you really wanted to, but you're only going after unavailable men. Yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. It's what helpful. feels more believable to you? I think, especially since I like shared my upbringing and how I was like really quiet and shy, very demure, very mindful, um, <laughs> and didn't get that attention growing up. You know, there is yeah. that, I think innate desire inside that like i my, can get the hottest guy my today. guess is if i were to like channel my th- therapist darlene again not a therapist take what i say with a grain of salt but i think every time you meet a hottie 15 year old you pops out the high school quarterback i mean god that's honestly probably the only reason you said yes to him because like 15 year old yeah. you would have been geeking out yes exactly um, and I think when you're on dates with other men you do find attractive, that validation of having believe that the, this hottie likes you, that little girl comes out and, and right. that's the person you're validating. To yes. me, that sounds way more logical than you know, the other stuff. Than the no, other that stuff. makes sense. And I'm not saying yeah. the other stuff isn't valid and maybe there aren't hints of that there and things like that too. But right. And I'm not trying to have some sort of debate with whoever gave you that advice or wherever you read it. It's more I like I think it actually came up with it on my own and just trying oh, okay, to make, make sense of why, you know, it's been this way for me, but it's just more like what do we do with this information? Right. Maybe it's some past, you know, abandonment issues, you know, like it sounds to me that you do want to have a relationship. You seem like you're actively pursuing one. Again, maybe that's with unavailable men, but 
I think it's not they're unavailable that you're finding attractive. It's their face. Yeah, and the charisma and how yeah, they make you and how feel. and how they are in bed and how they make you feel in the moment and and yeah. and the intensity and excitement that is centered around hanging out with some of these guys. Well, and there's that butterfly feeling that yeah. you know everyone talks about totally. and. Um, so the, the, I... for you, the problem you're and, and and if I were to guess here, your challenge of of landing one of these men has more to do with the fact that you haven't been able to wrangle fifteen year old you from coming <laughs> out every time you hang out with one of these men, and instead yeah. of being the confident, beautiful woman that you are, that many men like this uh, last guy you went on a date with, like can't believe you're on a date with, when you meet a guy that you feel like you need their validation, you turn into the ugly duckling and the yeah. insecure little girl who needs validation and it's like not that attractive. A hundred percent. So you need, how do we figure that out? I don't know, but you just read me like a book. <laughs> do you work on that with your therapist? Yeah, I actually just switched therapists. I had been seeing one for 10 years mm -hmm. and just felt like time for a new one. Was it because um, you like listened to an episode a couple weeks ago, was it? I was listening to that one recently, but I switched before that episode. <laughs> it, with your new therapist, I, again, check in with him, get, his, get their opinion. But this would seem like maybe something you could work on. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, you know, fight against that little girl coming out when you're on these dates. Yeah. No, um, that's really helpful. And I haven't really had that frame of mind when I've been thinking about it. So it helps us to chat it out. A couple just, again, just real basic stuff I could pass along to you is when you're on these dates, like for you, knowing this, just knowing this and recognizing this and saying it out loud to yourself and owning it, anytime you match with a guy on an app and, and you can say to you, I find him very attractive, immediately mm -hmm. you need to recognize your vulnerability. Yeah, yeah. Now, I've recognizing you your, recognizing yeah. your vulnerability doesn't mean you psych yourself out. You're like, oh my God, no, I'm not going to be able to normal around this guy. It's just like, all right, I think he's hot. All right, calm down. You literally tell yourself to calm down. I'm uh, like, he's hot. We're getting married. <laughs> yeah, he's hot. But like, I've met a lot of hot assholes before. I need to get to know him. And so yeah. before I start planning my future with him and start telling myself, I need this guy to like me. Right. I need to see potentially in him a lot of guys I've met before who I now can't stand and find yeah. unattractive by what I've learned by them. And I just need to see that potential in him. We always like to see everyone's good potential when we don't know them. Yeah. But I think it's also fair and like maybe like a safeguard to see their bad potential too. And just be open right. to finding out which one's more true. And so maybe to help not get yourself psyched out is to simply recognize that you know, you need to learn about their potential, both good and bad, and be open to both being true, even though they're hot. Right. And just and really well, and just having say. that conversation out loud with yourself might be might go a long way to like helping you like have this come up in real time. And that might calm you right. down on a date. It might just be like I, you know, instead you're going into dates hoping these guys like you. Right. It's all you care about. You go into these first dates with these men that you find very physically attracted to, not even thinking about getting to know them or learning about them. Your only objective is that they leave and want a second date with you. That's all your yeah. head is at. And so how could you not psych yourself out? So when that's your only objective, like, what do you do with that? When, like, I don't know. Walk in a room where people say, impress me. But that's the energy you're bringing to the table. No wonder, I'm sure at times you've acted insecure or neurotic or weird. Or I'm sure how many times have you left these dates and thought to yourself, who the fuck was that? What did I just do? What, what, who was that? Who was that person? <laughs> have you ever felt that way after a date? Yeah. Like when I've felt the energy be me way more attracted than they are, or just like, wow, this guy's really hot and it doesn't feel like it's going well, other than the fact that he's hot. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. It's probably because you go in there putting all this pressure on yourself that you have to like impress the room. Right. Right. You know, as opposed to going into a date being like, all right, he's hot. Cool. I've met a hot guy before. Neat. I'm mm -hmm. hot too. Let's yeah. see if I like him. I don't know if I like him. You seem, you know, there's you, you, you're 40 years old. You've must men met a lot of annoying, douchey, 
awkward, good looking men. Absolutely. Yes. So I think it's the ones that are calm, cool, collected, and like. Just have you met them. enough of calm, cool, collected guys on the app only to meet them in person and realize was your friend texting me before? Because who is this guy? You've never yeah, met no, one? for sure. All right. So why can't you go into a date and just acknowledge that even though he's hot, he could be one of these many men before that have proved to me to be like someone I'm not interested in? Absolutely. As opposed to convincing yourself that this guy could be the one. And if he is, I need him to be obsessed with me. Right. And he obviously is not the one if I'm having to convince anyone, anyone to be obsessed with me. I think that's a, a power well, thing where I can Sure. But that's, that's more your yeah, logical you knows that. But your ego, you know what I'm saying? This is about you checking your ego, right? This is about yeah. you. We, this is about you just figuring out how to like have a conversation with yourself that you can go into first dates uh, like yourself and calm. Yeah. And you can be the person on a date with someone you recognize as very physically attractive the same way you'd go on a date with someone that you don't find very attractive. And how can you be that person? Yeah. Incredibly confident on those dates. Yeah. And to do that is just recognizing that you've met a lot of weird, awkward, inappropriate, obnoxious, good-looking men. Yes, that was very true. And then consider the possibility that they might be one of those guys as well. And yeah. also recognize that the odds are, since it's like, you know, really good versus the field of, of, of annoying characteristics, you know, the chances of him being great is slim to none. Slim to none. <laughs> So you're psyching yourself out with a bunch of men that you would eventually be annoyed with, but you don't even give them an opportunity to annoy you because like, you can't even be yourself on a first date because 15-year-old you comes up. Yeah, I think it's also about not letting the ego be so bruised that it impacts my confidence over time. Like what, when what it do does, when they're, you know, it's like instead of being like, oh my God, but he was so hot. I wish he would have texted me just recognizing not my guy and well that's all you're thinking about you are obsessing right. over these guys' look and and if you right. are saying if you can go on a first date and then think to yourself i didn't really have that much fun i don't think he was that interested in me um seemed kind of annoying actually it was a little bit rude but oh my god he was so hot i hope he texts me then yeah. you know that's where you gotta you know give be a little self-aware here you know and, yeah. and recognize at this stage in your life you should be able to at least have learned from your own mistakes one would hope yeah you can. I mean, I think that I am definitely more self-aware. I think it's, I, I haven't had a crush on someone in a really long time. I've just found myself not attracted to a lot of people. Yeah. And I don't know if that's just the pool is getting smaller. No, I think you just could be on a hot. Listen, I just think there's more people out there you're not physically attracted to than you are. are and as should be in the general. case. Yeah. You know, it's just like. Right. I think, again, I think social media, I, I, I do think. Social media media has warped our entitlement to what we think we deserve in the looks department. Yes, I um, agree. Um, and that, the apps can be really tough too because it's all based on looks. And totally, I think you could be patient for someone you find physically attractive. I and that can be a spectrum, but I don't think you have to start going on dates of men that you have to like get over that you don't find them physically attractive. Be willing to let people surprise you. You know, I don't think there's anything wrong with going on a date with a guy because he showed you a different side that maybe wasn't leading with his looks and he made you laugh and he made you, you know, I don't know, but it should be based around how he makes you feel. You know, for sure. You know, um, so I'm all for that. But when it comes, you know, but I'm saying when then you meet a guy who you are physically attracted to, the more you can, again, calm down, pull back. Have a conversation with yourself. Recognize that this is just the beginning. Stop focusing on their looks. Recognize, speak out loud the reality that I'm going to go on this date and I'm going to get to know this guy. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be open to the possibility of learning about something I don't like. And honestly, your dream scenario is a guy early on showing you something you don't like, more of an ick, so that mm -hmm. you can kind of like slow it down. Slow it yeah. down. And then he can yeah. feel a little insecure that, you know, whatever. But because there's so much of, of getting to know someone, especially early on, and I feel like why people have our hard and harder and time connecting is because we've gotten way too like picky early on and, and judgmental. And, and, and there's always another person to match with as soon as this bad date ends. 
yeah et cetera et cetera so i i do think we have to you know to to challenge but we're not even getting to know each other you know like again yeah. you're you're not getting to know these guys you're just focusing on them liking you a hundred percent and then you're matching with a bunch of men who probably aren't interested in these relationships a lot of them are probably telling you that mm -hmm. uh and they're just interesting in having casual sex for whatever reason or they're married and they tell you on the date that they're married yeah and do you stay on these dates no <laughs> okay. well, that's good yeah, but it's, I mean, it's definitely happened. You just kind of, the kind of people that are on the apps now is a lot different, I feel like, than it was like 10 years ago. Oh, I, I mean, I can only imagine. Um, yeah. And that, that that part sucks. But you could, do yeah. you live in a decent sized city? Yeah, I'm just outside of a city. Okay. So there are other ways to meet people, for sure, in for your sure. case, than apps. But like, I'm not saying yeah. you can't, but pick, you know, you can pick and choose i also think with apps i think a lot I, can, I think they can be a lot more productive if you're willing to come up with your own boundaries and limitations to how you use the apps and hold yourself accountable to do that boundaries being like how how often you're on the apps how many people you match with conversations you're willing to have you know like yeah, yeah. if you're just using it as a validation tool for like hot or not or how many people you know then it becomes you know you shouldn't be talking with many men at once like how can you possibly get to know them i think you should try to limit that and you know yeah. and and try to get on as, as facetime or zoom dates as fast as possible because like texting with someone is a, 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 a texting with a stranger i think is a giant waste of your time and i also recognize that like going on physical dates even if you're not the one paying for them is just like a big time commitment suck and it can yeah. be emotionally exhausting where you can learn a lot about someone in 10 to 15 minutes over a FaceTime or a Zoom and, and move on. And But at the same time, I don't think you should be talking to multiple people at once because like then you're just kind of dating yeah. around. Yeah, um, I don't have the um, energy for multiple people at once. <laughs> like yeah. I tend to just focus on one, two max at a time. Um, and I have tried the Zooms before a, a first date. Not a lot of people are like open to doing it or they just find it to be weird um that's fine but, yeah yeah but you could weed a lot of people out that way right. i think you're in a position to have some again it's like boundaries everyone finds your boundaries inconvenient to them right. everyone right because that's what about like just if they don't that's just because they're aligned with your boundary and it really ceases to be a boundary for them it's you know it's very easy for them to respect something they also need to have happen. right Right. But when you say a, a boundary for you is often limiting access to someone else in some way, shape, or form, mm -hmm. and that is something that people will find inconvenient or annoying or frustrating. Mm -hmm. And that's the moment that most people struggle with because to do that, to enforce that boundary has to be to disappoint the people we often don't want to disappoint. Mm -hmm. And it's having the guts to still do that and to say, this is actually important to me, and this is not something, you know, and, and, and I hope you still accept me. Mm -hmm. But the more you're willing to do that and show that, like, it is important to you, more, more people will respect that about you. And if they right. don't, they won't. But, like, for the guys who, like, find hopping on a quick Zoom. Well, it tends to look like a red flag for me. So I'm like, okay, well. What do you mean? It looks, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. That it, it's yeah. a red flag. It's like, then, right. then, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's not a, it's not a huge ask. No, you know. I don't think so either. And it, you know, who wants to get ready for a whole date if they don't have to? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, but I just said, so, but that's, that's a good thing. If people have a hard time, uh, meeting your boundaries, chances are it's a pretty good boundary, mm -hmm. you know, or, or, well, maybe, maybe a good boundary is a wrong way to look at it. Maybe it just means it's really important to you and, and difficult for other people to meet. and that's. Some, let's tell you something, you know? Yeah. 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 I think it's about trusting my gut a little bit more too with that stuff. Well, part of trusting your gut is, is be willing to respect your gut over what your ego needs. And most of the time we don't trust our gut because it's not about not trusting our gut. It's about ignoring our gut because we want this hot person to be our person. No, it's true. You're giving me a lot to think about. It's helpful for sure. Cause I do want to think about like, okay, well, what can I do to kind of at least have like a mindset shift or just be more aware of the like 15 year old me version and just chatting through that, I think is. Do you feel like you have some guidelines? From what you and I talked about? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's just, what would they be? 
Well, you're on I the app. You match with a hottie. Yeah. Chris Hemsworth. All right, go. What do you do? <laughs> you want to get on a Zoom and chit chat a little bit? That's the first thing you do. Well, on you know when when we're like matching. No, no. What's the first thing you you match with someone? What's the first thing you do? Very first thing. Check with myself and right. also remind myself that I am now vulnerable because okay. I'm attracted to this person. There you go. All right. Step one. There we go. See, that's what but then, I'm, that matters, you know? And then run. <laughs> no, step two no, is acknowledge fair. that you want to get to know this person. And despite them being hot, they yeah. could be what? A douche. Right? Yeah. An asshole. Yeah. All of the above. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I put them on a pedestal the second I'm attracted to them. If it's like their personality, they're charismatic, they're the social butterfly, they make everyone laugh. Sure. They're just hot, you know, I'm like, oh my God, you know, and then there's just like this huge range of either I'm like very attracted or I'm disgusted. <laughs> but I mean, again, I don't know, I'm not, I haven't been in a room with you when you're on the dating apps matching with these guys. Do you think you're capable of, of doing that? Of checking in with myself and yeah. reminding myself how, yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. I think you, it's about being aware of it. And I don't know that I've like taken a step back and said to myself, you're doing it again and you're, you're getting all amped up and hyped up about someone that you don't even know anything about other than that he's physically good looking. There you go. Do you have a friend oh. that can remind you of this? Oh yeah. Okay. Many friends that will happily remind me of this. Is this new information or is this the same information given to you in a different way? I think it's the same information given in a different way. I don't think I've ever really talked about like my youth and kind of how I felt in terms of my like attractiveness and how that might translate over to my adult dating um, and what, where I'm seeking validation for. Like, I don't know if I've ever really heard it in those terms, but yeah, I mean, I think I've heard before, like what I'm attracted to tends to be like physically great on paper, but generally speaking, people who well, are not all like, good partners. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and I'm not asking this so that I could be like, yeah, I gave the best advice you've ever given. That, no. That's, no, I want, I want, I, what I don't want this to be is the same thing in a different way. And then like, you don't do anything with this information. I, I want to figure out what will be different going forward for you. So if that is new, then again, find that friend. Again, you just, again, people use the word intentional all the time. This is you being intentional, intentional. Yeah. Is not just getting on the phone with me and talking about your problems. And then for the past, you know, 40 minutes, you've been the center of attention here. And that's great. Yeah. We've been able to talk about you. And sometimes I think we like to talk about our problems with our friends because we are, in fact, the center of that attention. Right. Yeah. But th even in therapy, th people, we get addicted to therapy. Why? Because it's two people in a room oh, talking about me, you know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then when my therapist wants to talk about their life, I could be like, shut the fuck up. I'm paying you. No, <laughs> but seriously, th there is a little bit of that, you know? And so if you yeah. do have a habit of constantly like getting with the girls or a couple of your guy friends or family members to talk about your dating dilemmas and problems, then everyone's giving you advice. You're always saying, I know I need to change this. I know I do this over and over, but you never actually do. Then that's something you should recognize. But again, being intentional with your dating life would be to actually do the thing that we've been talking about, which is to A, now phone the friend. Like be like, hey, listen, this is something I've been working on about myself, but I have this habit. So I want you to check in with me from time to time. And when I meet a guy I'm physically attracted to, I'm probably gonna call you out and say, hey, we found one. So we're on yeah. high alert. So I need you to check in with me and just remind me, and I'm gonna try to remind myself that I am susceptible to like, like completely ignoring all the obvious red flags because I just want this hot guy mm -hmm. to take my clothes off. And I want, I want to prove to my ego that like I can, I can change whatever problems he has and we'll, we'll figure out, we'll just muscle through this until I can show the world that I can land this hottie. But what I'd like to do, and the next time I go on a date with this guy, I'd like to focus on getting to know him because God knows I've met too many good looking guys that just turn out to be fucking ew, gross. Yeah. So together, friend, we're going to do this and actually doing the thing. Well, I think it's about actually doing the thing and getting out of the spiral and the rumination of does he like me back and just be confident in who I am and not care so much if it doesn't work out. And you seem like a highly intelligent, very capable, self-aware person that I do think 
Because like I think sometimes these these things sound cheesy or oh my god really I'm actually you know like but they work. Yeah, you know? no, I think so. And and holding yourself accountable might take phoning the friend or having the yeah. conversation with you or a conversation with yourself. But you know, doing the same thing over and over and over, I don't think you're crazy. Uh, even though that's a definition of insanity, but it could be just <laughs> plain old fashioned like talking about yourself. Fair, that's fair. Just a thought. Uh, no, I think that's. Fair. I think I think we're all guilty of that. To be clear, I'm not trying to come out. Uh, uh, you know, but no, for sure, for sure. You seem. It's all I guess really my helpful. big takeaway is you seem more than capable of like correcting course and and. And I want to. Yeah, and I don't think you need to like settle for guys that you find homely and a little and a Thanks. little obnoxious. I really appreciate that. All right. All right. Well, good luck out there. Thanks, guys. All I right. really appreciate it. I like your boots. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, well, love an update on how, how, if you actually implement some of the stuff and, and, and if you notice a yeah. difference, but yeah. slow down, check in with yourself, you know, learn from your past experience. You have some lived experience. That's, that is the benefit of getting older. <laughs> it sure is. All right. All right, guys. Thanks right. so much. All Take right. care. Take care. Bye. Right, bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to send in your questions at asknickofthevalfiles.com for all things Ask Nick. Texting office hours. We'll be back tomorrow for Reality Recap. See you then. Bye. Hey, guys. If you loved what you listened to, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.